Hello everybody, my name is Tavish Durham and this is um, not really a character playthrough for the game Fallout 4 owned by Bethesda including sounds and everything. I'm saying that because I've previously gotten a letter about that. At one point in time I forgot to mention that. So uh, yeah. Anyway, this is a modded playthrough, predominantly. What I will be doing is just kind of building in Sanctuary to make it an actual sustainable uh, settlement before I leave and go do anything. The uh, mods that I'm using uh, let's see if I could take a look at that for you guys. <laughs> some of these mods came from the website called Nexus Mods, and some of them came from the actual PlayStation Network itself. What is this? Oh. Not telling what that was for. Anyway, I do have unlocked settlement objects, the core components, I have armor keywords. Um, this mod does more than just that. The ones that you don't see a description for are the ones that I got off of Nexus Mods. A workshop framework, a sim settlements, unstoppables. This is just a, a mod that gives, uh, I believe, let me think here, specific character costumes based off the comic book characters in Fallout. The settlement menu manager, which I'm not sure if I can remember what that does. Then, of course, I've got the uh, Unlock Settlement Objects add-ons. Nuka World, Far Harbor, Vault Tech, Wasteland, Contraptions, and Automatron. The Cheat Terminal. This does two things. It has a holotape called the Cheat Terminal Portable in your Pip-Boy. And here soon, I'll show you guys what that does. Now, it also gives you an item that you can craft in your settlements called the cheat terminal. It does the same thing the portable one does. Got warehouse extensions, uh, barn add-ons, cigarette in mouth. This is one of my favorite mods. What it does is it creates a wearable item that is a cigarette or cigar or pipe or I think it does more than that, but I'm not sure. But it's an aesthetic choice for your character. And you got a unlimited, unlimited settlement objects mashups, which let's see, it, it just gives a high, like right here, um, it gives cages for black cats, puppies, and iBots to boost settlement happiness. Custom refilling containers for Vim, Nuka World's rare Nuka Cola flavors, and etc. Uh, a, dis a Vim display rack, which is pretty much just a reskin of the Nuka Cola one you can find. Um, as well as gives high class variants of vault rooms. And it combines textures found in Vault 118 with the vault room items from the DLC. Uh, settlement limit slashed What this does is gives it an unlimited build limit with no limit at all the overseer armory This is very useful Because This basically gives you a starter set to make it through and um, 
what this does here. Um, anyway, you have the uh, Overseer's Armory adds an armory in Vault 111 or expands on the one that is in the security area with the Cryolator. Uh, and this right here adds different types of, um, well, it makes your uh, Protectrons more customized. For instance, um, the police, medic, firefighter, as well as the paint jobs for all of these actually work out better as well as a hat you can put on them as and custom paints uh, the paints only work with the protectron parts at all um, apparently the guy who made this would prefer it if you ask him if you want others then there's any armor on any clothes. Um, what this does is adds armor. Uh, allows you to wear armor over unique outfits. And then there's moddable robot settlers. These are the robots in, um, in the various settlements that you can't fix which as you can see is for all of the robots that you can't usually mod you can now mess with them in the automatron works workstation and the ones that don't have a check mark by them i don't have activated then right here is uh the workshop synth pro production which gives you two items. Uh, one is the synth fabricator, which is the machine that builds synths. Um, unfortunately, they did not actually does not actually say, uh, as far as I could tell. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, you have to find the hollow tape, which is in the institute. Or if you've already destroyed the Institute, it's by the Institute. Um, you do get a body scanner, which will uh, scan any living or dead NPC and allows you to build them. Uh, the, and it's up to eight male or female templates stored at a time. Let's see here. Burn sure. Yeah, it's uh, since created it are templated to look like the desired actor, but behave like workshop NPCs. Though they are forced to use settlers' voices, this means you can assign them to works, objects, supply lines, and etc. Okay, there's Jaggy Mitt, which is um, a specific type of armor mod. It gives you a helmet and some... Uh, Pauldrons, I guess you can call them. Armor on your shoulder. The they're specifically designed uh, off of the anime Fist of the North Star and the character of Jaggy, or Jaggy. I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, you have to go find a guy in Good Neighbor and pay him for these armor pieces, which are a separate armor piece. They don't take up any slots except for the helmet. So they work with anything else. And you got Creative Clutter here. Which um, adds extra stuff to your home. Again, it's over 900 decorations, armor. Well, not armor, but furniture, food resources, and whatever else. Um, there's a lot of work has been put into it. Then there's the alternate start. The alternate start, and it says infinite ants, I, I don't remember what that says, but uh, again, this makes you a synth, 
Pretty much. Infinite Answer provides an alternative means to start the game for those who do not wish to go through the lengthy intro sequence in Sanctuary and Vault 111, as well as being the sole survivor. You're given the opportunity to choose your gender and looks and then go on to choosing a new life for your character to lead, or ignore choice and live your life out of the way fate had planned. A variety of, variety of choices will be available, what you choose will have a lasting impact. Okay, so this mod has been difficult for me to use. I don't know why, but I think it's due to the mod order that I kind of sort of probably messed up. Don't know how, not going to look into it, not going to ask too many questions. Now, these aren't the only mods I have, I have a bunch others, just not activated or uploaded. This is because of how difficult it is for me to keep the uh, mods separate per character. So, that's how it is. But this one isn't a playthrough per se. Um, like I said earlier, all I'm doing is building. I'm going to be building some cool things out there. Now, I could have put up the... Um, I could have put in the... Well, what am I thinking of mod? It's uh, scrap everything, but I've had issues with that. At one point in time, uh, that mod conflicts with a lot of other mods, so I can't really use it very well. And at one point in time, it did cause my game to crash because I forgot to have it properly loaded with a separate character. And when I tried to go through the settlement I had made, um, everything clipped together and caused the game to crash. Alright, now... I'm going to show you guys what the... Um... Okay, so... They see here. Oh yeah, most people don't know. You can in fact find a Volt 111 Volt Tech lab coat. And in the vault, it is to the left of the um, ramps you go up to exit. And it's over in the corner on a shelf. Anyway, I'm going to show you what the cheat terminal portable is like. Alright, now... I will briefly explain what each of these tags do for those of us who don't want to just get the mod and do it ourselves. Specials and perks... It, it gives you two options. You can click on specials and perks and... What specials does is it'll show all the stats and stuff and this allows you to set your stats up to the highest 10 or the lowest one. You can also increase them by one but as you can see it's usually a 1, 5, or 10. It's like that for all of these. Now perks, what this does is you click on one of these and it shows you all the perks relevant to that specific stat. Um, the companion one, that'll somewhat surprise you. Because as you see here, it's all of the mods that actually help. It's all the perks that help your companions. And of course, the other ones, you know, it's like Iron Fist or Arbor or Blacksmith. Depends on which one you want to do. I don't usually mess with the specials or perks anymore. When I first got this mod, I did, but I had to quit. Now under items and equipment, you pick from one of these. Now under keys, it actually has every key in the game. Which, um, this is 
I probably made a mistake, but let's see. Yep. It shows every single key for everything. Now what I want to know is if it has the Vault 111 key for the Cryolator, which, which is not under C. So it's probably under V in Vault 111 somewhere. If there's a key for it at all. Probably not. Because this is literally every key in the game. And every password for the game. All of them. Which considering these have zero weight or zero value. Yep, I knew it. It's not listed. Anyway. I'm getting out of that. Didn't grab anything. Now it has literally everything. Now since this is mostly crafting, it has, okay, under, you can change how many of these to give, but if you go to the bottom, it has add every component, which in this case, it gave me 500 of everything. And under, let me see, configuration, I think items you can come here and you can switch it to where it shows add every component to the top of that list amounts of items to give and in this case it's auto set to 500 but you can reset them to any of these I would highly recommend setting it to a thousand uh, something that is very useful to do is since now that you're over encumbered uh, I would I'm exiting the pit boy I'm going to turn around transfer and hit T for store all junk and as you can see everything you had is now in a workshop to be used and you're back down to not being over encumbered anymore now, if you do make mistakes, which they do happen, I've made a lot of errors where I accidentally gave myself too much stuff, and this is when I first started the modding thing. <laughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. I did not realize that with the amount of stuff given, that unless, since I'm using my PC for this, um, should probably get rid of these roaches. That was a bit too close for comfort. So I'm going to go around, kill all the bugs. And... This is predominantly for this front part here I'm going to scrap all this stuff in front here and something I'll do if you don't want to build big walls around the entirety of the settlement which has always been a bit of a struggle for me okay wrong button Okay, you can still scrap everything. This just makes it a little easier when it comes to uh, fixing stuff up and cleaning things up. Now, I do like the scrap everything mod if you're going to be extensively rebuilding everything, but it's a very hard to remember to find mod. At least in my opinion, I always had difficulty remembering I had it. 
Now, something most people don't notice is the mailboxes. Uh, some of them have names on them. Also, if you are ever wondering how to uh, get your settlements, like give them how to give them weapons and stuff without having to literally go to every single one of them and reset all of that. Um, you can literally store them, store weapons in like mailboxes and stuff, and when the settlement is being attacked, uh, they will go grab them. I also used to have the place everywhere mod. Uh, I do not remember if this was on a different computer or not though. So right now what I'm going to do is show you the gate. How I built the gate. And I apparently messed up. Oh yeah. Um, if you're going, when you do get the unlimited settlement objects, you have to go into the USO option here because everything else has been moved in there except for additions or add-ons. Let's see here. Because as you see, this is exactly identical to how it's set up. Certain things have been added and changed. Now, I like to build the junk fence uh, specifically the junk gate the big one this one specifically now I like to build it like right here because I'd have to build the uh, I'd have to uh, let me try to remember what I'm talking about oh yeah under go defenses and guard posts I like to build the guard towers right next to it and the hard part is always trying to get it to be placed just right now the only hard part with this is it does make the gate a little bit awkward for placement because as you see there's a bit of a gap but by putting the gate literally right onto the bridge you don't have to worry about it and yeah this somewhat means it might be a little difficult to see someone coming up to the gate but you can also if you really want to you might be able to move the gate back now when I had the place anywhere mod uh, I was able to move it back to where the gate was right there and if you really want to you can even move the gate back here and pick up and put the guard towers right next door if uh, you can get it to work right now because of this you're gonna have to put a small wall right here shouldn't be too big an issue really really depends on just where you put it really uh, usually I will stick a concrete wall here or something similar um, I can look into the wood and metal specifically under walls and see what I can find like this could work Let me see here. All right, those gaps are small enough now not to be severely noticeable. And 
it works great from a distance. Now, something else um, you can do is go back into defense, open up the turrets, and unfortunately you need the rankings to build right there. So whenever I am able to build these things, I'll simply upgrade the defense of Sanctuary Hills that way. Now I know some people are like, where do you put guards up if you have uh, turrets as well? You see, it's more of an aesthetic choice for me. Also, what I just did is kind of a way for you to move through areas if you need to go from one spot to the next. In this case, um, what I did was is I picked up the gate, walked through it, and then hit tab, which sets which you let go and it just uh, snaps right back to where it was. Now I'm gonna go through and scrap all of the pretty much all the broken stuff out on the street and things like these tires the cars and everything um, this is so that this way is clear and it's because I'm going to be building in this area Uh, specifically what I'm going to do is when I get all the way into the corner there, there is a house I can act that's, there's several houses there that have been torn down. And what I could do is when I get to them, I can scrap the houses. and rebuild it. And what I mean by that is I'm not actually rebuilding the house. I'm replacing it. And what I'm replacing it with, uh, right here I'm probably just gonna make a little residential thing. But what I'm doing here is I will be building power right here and I'm gonna take one of the small shacks you can build with the prefabs and stick it over here now unfortunately since this is a first level character the most you can make are windmills and the small and medium generators Now I like to cover it up with as much and as many of these as I can. And this can, and when you uh, get access to the bigger bigger and better so to speak, of the uh, generators. All you need to do is scrap them. I like to keep them in this spot because not only does it easily allow me to move things throughout the settlement so that it can be built there, But it also makes it a little bit easier on me for organization. Because uh, I've attempted to um, try to pre-organize all of these. And 
now the only, now what I'll do is I'll go through and attach them to each other because uh, this I found was the easiest way to stack the power. Yeah, I probably should have been doing this as I was building up. And this is how you get automatically enough power and almost automatically enough defense. Anyway, I should probably stop the video now. It's been long enough. And in the next video, I will show how, well, for lack of a better term, uh, how I use the turrets in a very creative way. Now, I didn't realize this until a little while after. Um, this design is not my own with the turrets, but what I'll do is I will kind of sort of stack the turrets on top of each other. And what I mean by that is, is I'll build a small tower, cover it, and um, it'll be at least three stories tall, three floors high, and I'll put four turrets at the top. And Oh yeah, also to distribute the power throughout my uh, settlement, uh, I'll be putting, I'll go over here to lights, and click on the street lights, and use the street lamps, which are the brightest, and I'll build them up around the area. about one next to every house uh, give or take and if they're too far away from each other I just go and put down a different uh, let me think what I do if they're too far away from each other I will put the large power pylons in between something else I do is I'll alternate the sides of the streets. Like uh, this one right here, and this one like right here. Um, one here, one here, and one here. And I'll continue this way throughout the whole settlement, and then the entire walkway will basically be lit place one in the middle there. I've not done that in any of my playthroughs yet. And this also helps that I don't accidentally initiate the conversation between my character and Codsworth. Preferably stick them next to mailboxes. Uh, to make it a little easier. And if you've played Fallout for a while, what you can do is uh, put the turret columns next to uh, next to the hotspots where there's respawns usually, just so it's a little easier. This also helps with the distribution of power. And that's about it, really. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in. You guys have a good day. Talk to you all later. See you around.